I would like to hear some Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so now we have the successful Reddit posts number of upvotes. Okay, what we want to get is the total number of successful upvotes. So let's um, first do it kind of uh, like we would uh, in the old days, or not in the old days, but kind of where we go through it manually. Yes, yes. so what do you think? We need to add all these individual numbers together. So what, what do we need to do then? Oh, sorry, what is your name? Uh, the guy in the red? <laughs> yes, yeah, Christian. Christian, okay. Krishna. Krishna. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Krishna, can you? Uh, wh wh what do you think we need to? Also, we need to look through the area. Yes. And what should we do when we look through it? We can use for loop. Yes. But what should we do in the for loop? What we are we are adding them. Yes. Exactly. We need to move the counts. Yeah. We need to do maybe not counts, but some. Count is fine. <laughs> um, okay, we'll take the successful Reddit posts and we will use the for each. What you've seen this before, right? Yes. yes. What does for each take as a parameter? A function, yes. And what does that take as a parameter? Yes, exactly. So let's call it. Successful Reddit posts. A boat. Be into meaningful names for the other. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's super easy to understand. I would just put A. Yes, okay. exactly. And I don't want to see that in the homework. <laughs> okay. I really. What? Sorry. Upvote. That's better. Much better. I like it. Thank you, Pankaj. Um, we call it upvote because we know what we are looping through because we can we can see here that it's a sec successful reddit post so we we don't necessarily need to write that again okay we'll do it with the arrow function so we we'll do it like this and um, what do we need to do yes yes exactly plus equals Oh. We don't necessarily need to return it because we are changing yeah. this variable. Yeah. Okay, let's try and uh, console. Let's lock the sum out. Have a look at it. Okay, it seems about right. Okay. Um, so this is one way of doing it. And what we are actually doing, if we kind of think about it a bit more conceptually, we are taking this array of upvotes and we are kind of, we are reducing it into one value, mm -hmm. okay, which is the sum. And that is exactly what the reduce function does. It reduces an array into one value. And that value that you want to reduce it to could be anything. It could be another array, it could be an object, it could be a number, it could be a string, whatever you want, okay? We just reduce it to one single value. So let's try and look how that, um, how that looks with the reduce function where we do the sum. So let's say um, constant sum reduce. Okay, um, dots, reduce, and reduce, it takes a function, again, and uh, that function actually takes, um, points. yeah, it can take, uh, I think it's minimum two, but it can take three, mm -hmm. and we'll have a look at what those different things are. Yes, the accumulator, and let's call this the upvote. 
and then I. Okay, and what we can do here, return the accumulator plus the abode. Okay, I know this looks a bit weird and I will explain what it does. Let's try and log it out and see if we have actually done this right. Okay, it looks like we have the right function. It actually give us exactly the same as when we just went through each individual array and added that to the, um, to the sum. But here we are using the reduce function. Okay, so the first thing you're probably thinking is, what is an accumulator? Like, that sounds weird. Um, so the accumulator takes the value of what you return here. Okay, and when we call reduce here, like this, the accumulator will take the value of the first element in the array. Okay, so I'm going to lock some different things out now. I'm going to lock the accumulator, the upload, and I. Okay. Okay, so let's have a look. So this is the accumulator, this is the upvote, and this is I. Okay. The accumulator... Why doesn't it start with zero? Um, that's because we haven't defined the first element. Uh, we haven't set what the initial value of the reduce function should be. Okay. And you'll see that in a second. So when you just call reduce, It'll assume that you want the accumulator to be the first element of the array. It'll assume that, okay? So that means 621, that's the accumulator. It's the first element of the array. The up vote is 16,565, okay? And the index is 1. That's very important to kind of uh, understand. We don't start with the first element of the array because the accumulator is already the value of the first element okay so what happens is that what we return here okay is going to in the next loop be the new accumulator so so let's let's uh, take 621 okay and we're going to plus it with this what should this be equal to? Yes, exactly. It should be equal to this element. Because in the next loop, now we are taking the value that we've returned and assigning that to the accumulator. Okay, let's see if that's right. Okay, perfect. Now the accumulator is this, this, plus this. And we add the first element of the array. Not, not the zeroth index, but the first index. So actually it's the second element of the array. Okay. Next time, okay, we go through our accumulator is this plus this. Now we say, so in the next loop, what is our accumulator going to be equal to? Well, it's going to be equal to 17,186 plus Three, two, one, one. Okay, perfect. This is what we have here. Okay. So the accumulator, when we return that, that will be the value of the accumulator in the next the next time we loop through it. Okay. And that means that when we go through, actually we're just adding. We're adding this plus this plus this plus this plus this, and that in the end gives the sum of uh, all of our elements okay but let's try and do this in another way so here we um, we don't define a default value for the reduce but let's try and define the default value for the reduce so how would you figure out uh, kind of 
what parameters the reduce function takes. So right now I can't remember, you know, how is it I specify the first element of the accumulator? Like how is it I do that? W what should I do now? MDN. Yes. <laughs> Let's go to Google. Google can help us. MDN, JavaScript, yeah, reduce should be fine. Well, Visual Studio kind of has, you know, like they uh, they give you the tool. I'm surprised that you are actually using some like that. It's a personal thing. You like it, but you don't really care much about the text of it. Uh, I use PHP Storm in my job, but this is like, uh, ah, yeah. PHP guy. Yeah, not PHP guy, but I like uh, PHP Storm. It's really cool. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. It's it's really nice, yeah. very very nice. It's paid. What sorry? It's paid. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Let's see. Um, so the reduce function takes a callback function. It takes an accumulator. Uh, oh, it takes a callback function. Okay. And it takes an initial value. So now we are uh, we want to set the initial value this time. Okay. So it's the it's a second parameter of the function reduce. Okay, so here we have the first parameter. It's a function that in itself have parameters, and those parameters you can see here. So it says callback, and then you go down here and say callback, and it takes. Ah, oh, okay, the callback function takes accumulator, current value, current index, and the array. Okay. So let's try and give it a 42. initial value, 42. <laughs> let's try and just give it an initial value of zero. Okay. And now let's see uh, how it loops through uh, each element in the array. Some reduce has already been declared. What is the problem? You need to change the name. It's cost. Why is that a problem? Yes. What is it with constant? How is it that works? Constant. Mm -hmm. You can change the value, but you can't reassign it. You can't remove constant. Exactly. You can't reassign it. Yes. Not in the same scope. Yeah. Not in the same scope. Cool. <laughs> uh, let's call it initial. Boom. Okay. Um, mm, 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 mm. So this is our first time where we didn't we didn't specify the initial value of the accumulator. This is it uh, until here. But here we did actually specify the accumulator, and you see the difference here. Now the initial value of the accumulator is what we set it to. It's zero. But if we set it to seven, we will see seven here. See now the initial value of the accumulator is seven. We, we define what the initial value of the accumulator should be. Okay, but we'll set it to zero because we want our sum to begin with zero. So we see our accumulator is zero, our upvote is not the second element in the array as it was up here. It's the first element in the array. And this is the index of the array that we are currently looking at. And it's zero, not one. Okay? So when we define the initial value of the accumulator, you could say we are kind of more in control. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we need to do some of the hard work, I guess you could say. Okay, but let's, let's try and do the thing again where we go through and we ourselves figure out what the next value of the accumulator should be. So this is the first time we loop through it. So 623 plus zero is 623. That means the accumulator in the second run will be 623. Okay, what about in the third run? 623 plus... 
16,000. Yes, exactly. 17,269. Oh, that's exactly what we expected the accumulator to be. And now we add the second element. Okay, if you want to see a really kind of a nice example like this MDN, if you scroll down here, it actually has a really good um, example of exactly the thing that I did. So here we have a simple array like from one to four, sorry, from zero to four. Here we don't specify the initial value of the accumulator. Okay, there's, there's no comma zero here afterwards. And then here we can, we can see the first call, second call, third call, and fourth call. We can see the value of the accumulator, the current value, the current index, the array, and the return value. Exactly kind of like we did here, okay? Um, so you see here, when we don't specify the value, this runs how many times? If we have five elements in our array, and we don't specify an accumulator, how many times will we run through our array? Four. Four, yes, exactly. Because we start at the first element, and no, at the second element, sorry, <laughs> and not the first. What about when we specify an accumulator? If we have five elements in our array, how many times are we gonna run? Five. Five, exactly. Because we start with the first element of the array and go on. So this is like a, and we can see that here we run, we run five times and here we run four times. So it's, it's just really nice. You can see, oh, uh, the return value is like these two plus um, added together, that will give the accumulator in the next iteration. So here the return value is 11. Oh, that's the accumulator next time. So this is a really good example if, if you're kind of struggling a little bit because it is a little, a bit difficult. I, I definitely get that. Um, yes, so you're probably thinking to yourself, well, why would you? Why would you specify this zero value, you know? Yeah, but, but like now we don't really need to. We don't necessarily need to specify because we, we have the array exactly like the, we want. We have just the upvotes. Because we are adding. Uh, so nope. You said but control. Yeah. Control. We, want, we want some control. So what if we didn't have an array of the upvotes, but we had the original array that we didn't really like working with? We had just the Reddit posts, OK? So now um, a client comes to you and say, Okay, Benjamin, you have just the Reddit post and you need to sum up all the upvotes. Okay? Then we, then we think, okay, we definitely want to use uh, the reduce function and we don't want to do any mapping. Okay? So let's, let's try and see what happens here. Reduce, okay, takes a function, takes the accumulator and the upvote. That's enough for us to do our calculation. Let's say we did like before where we just go accumulator return accumulator plus the upvote. Okay? And we say uh, total upvotes. Yes, that is true. And why is that? Yeah, because here you have access to all the data. But yes, exactly. So actually, this is not this is not upvote anymore. Let's let's try and, and uh -huh, that's let's try and log it out. Upvote. So if it will add and it will get something out of it. Let's try and log this out. Let's see what we get. Okay, we have this good old array that we actually didn't want to really work with, but now someone has said to us, you have to use it. <laughs> okay, so we cannot change it with using map. We just want to use this array, okay? So if we call like upvote, this is not an upvote. Mm -hmm. 
it's a yeah reddit reddit post or something like that okay so now you see now we're gonna get some problems okay because what is the accumulator going to be equal to now what was it the accumulator was equal to when we don't specify an initial value first child yes what is the first child object object. exactly it's an object first, first so if we say accumulator plus a reddit post yeah, yeah, yeah. let's let's try and see what it actually gives us <laughs> the answer for everything let's uh, not lock these out but let's just like this oh upvote is not defined that's because yeah it's not because you're returning you just up, up, up and then you're not you're finding it everywhere, everywhere what sorry why, why, why do we have a problem now Exactly. Upvote is not defined. There's nothing called upvote. We change it to Reddit post. Okay. Uh oh. Beautiful. Beautiful. Not very nice to work with. <laughs> okay. So we are actually just adding the string of the objects together, which is pretty much useless. Actually, okay. it doesn't give an error. No, so there is. So if you add two objects, then it will convert the object to its string representation and it will add those two strings. So that's how JavaScript works. So those are bad parts of JavaScript. Yes. It assumes things yes. about what you want. For you and if you are a you may get Okay, so, so we definitely don't want that. <laughs> okay. What do we want? So we have to change we have to Value. Exactly. We have to say the default value of the accumulator. Now we want to control it because clearly, you know, you can't do it by yourself. Reduce function. You're not smart. You know, we're smarter than you. Okay. <laughs> so we need to define it. Okay. What 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 should our uh, initial value? Yeah. Exactly. Let's start with zero and then add from there. Okay. So. Now we have, uh, let, let's lock this out, let's see what we have. Uh, 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 um. So we see the initial value of our accumulator is zero. We are happy, but now we get problems because still our upvote is an object. So we want to change that as well. What should that be? <laughs> yes, exactly. Now we have what we want. Uh, uh, um, and let's see if we get the right value here. Uh, we get. Let me just see. Let's lock these out. Do, 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 do. And just see the total. It's three thousand thirty-six thousand eight hundred and fourteen. And what? You have, you have put a filter with that. Oh yeah, this is this is another array. This is the the successful Reddit post. Yeah. That's why it's different. But this should give us, if we look at all the individual Reddit posts and add those together, we should get thirty six thousand eight hundred and fourteen. Okay, because um, this is a lot better than doing like this, because. Maybe you're thinking, well, we, we could just map it, you know. So we could say, um, let's first say Reddit posts. Oh, dot map. Okay, Reddit posts. Uh, 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 um. And we say Reddit post dot data. Oh, sorry. Reddit post dot data dot UPS. Okay. So what does this give us? An array yes. of uh, ups. <laughs> yes, it gives an, an array of ups. And, well, really nice because now we don't have to define this annoying accumulator. We can just assume that it'll, and we can, 
we can change this to upvote and you know everyone's happy and you know everything's perfect but what is the problem with this code it will it will run perfectly and it look very nice when we log it out but we we have something that's not so nice here um, yeah, that, that is also a little annoying, yes. We generate two arrays. But let, let's try and uh, log it out and see how it looks. If we say um, console.log, Reddit post, and let's just log out the accumulator. And see? Now we. Total upvotes has already been yeah, defined. Return. Okay, you didn't see this, okay? Oh, sorry. I'm glad you're uh, on top of me. <laughs> okay, we need to return the map value. Um, I'm just gonna lock out. I'm just gonna remove all these locks because they are annoying us a little bit right now. Um. Did anyone notice uh, uh, the number was always changing? People yeah. are still voting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, We're working with live data. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> was actually bothering me. <laughs> what? Again? Stop voting, man. We're trying to work. <laughs> uh, um, so 67 and 71. 67. Yeah, so you see here, we are logging. So this is one last one. 51. Let's remove that. Okay. So now we have, here first we are logging the Reddit posts and then we are logging the upvotes. So we are, we are kind of doing it twice, right? We are first mapping where we are going through each individual element of the array and then again we are looping through each individual element of the array. Imagine that the Reddit posts is not 30 elements but it's 30 million elements, okay? Now it's going to make a huge difference if we loop through the element once or twice, okay? And we only wanna do it, we wanna do it as little as possible. That's what the problem is with this. We only actually need to, to run through the element once, but because we're doing this mapping first, and then reducing, then we're actually looping through the element twice, but we only need to do it once. And that really matters if you have huge amounts of data. So you should try and think about how many times your code runs. And that is why we want to specify the initial value of the accumulator. So we only have to run through the element once. Okay, because this, this looks nice and it actually looks kind of cool, you know, but the problem is with performance and runtime. We're going to run into some problems mm -hmm. the second we get large uh, data. So it, it may also be that you are not working with very large data, but this code is running very frequently. So suppose you want to do something like this, after every time your user moves the mouse, so if that event happens like 10 times in a second, then this code will then 10 times and if you want to do run a code like this on a smaller data but many times during a second then also it will be slower. It will be two times slower because you are iterating over uh, an array of just 30 elements but you are doing it twice. So even if you are building a small data you should write that. Yes. Okay. This is what we want to do. Cool. Um, I think it's lunch time now. Um, so I think when we return from lunch, then I'll explain you about the um, the last exercise, and uh, yeah, we'll go for that. What? Sorry. Stop recording.
<laughs> God damn it.